I am working on a very very simple power supply that's here uh, and I will surely publish the schematic on YouTube because it was a power supply that has helped me through the years 1980s up until now and it only uses one trans and transistor the 2 and 3055 five, say the workhorse uh, made this circuit in the past and the only thing that I want to show now is how to make a shunt resistor here is a micro amperometer somewhere in that circuit it's approximately 500 micro ampere that's very very tiny so it only with a tiny current uh, the pointer moves anyway but uh, when you want to use such a micro amperometer as a real amperometer say for 1 ampere or even 10 ampere you need a shunt that means in practice that you shortcut the meter with a resistor in the 0.001 or whatever ohms range and in practical that means that that is, a, that that is a wire here we have such a wire piece of copper wire insulated uh, please uh, take care that such a wire especially on higher currents uh, can get warm or even hot or burn out or whatever but for such a simple power supply that is no problem so with this piece of insulated wire I'm gonna shortcut the 500 micro amperometer that's here inside and this is how you can say calibrate such a micro amperometer home made micro amperometer for 1 ampere or 5 ampere or 10 ampere of course you need a kind of calibration and that calibration is here in the form of this uh, beautiful uh, digital meter that can measure currents up to approximately 10 ampere so uh, here is the calibrated meter say maximum 10 ampere you can also set such a meter to 1 ampere or so or 5 ampere doesn't matter much here is the meter uh, that you want to calibrate so want to give it say uh, make that the pointer moves to a certain position at 1 ampere 2 ampere 3 ampere 5 ampere etc and here is the load and you can even say use no load here because we are measuring current and important of course uh, that means that when you use no load the voltage supply must be variable so that you don't get a, a, a fierce shortcut anyway so for say simple uh, um, applications used here for instance a car lamp such a car lamp can be used as a load for an, uh, an, an, a power supply this is one that can handle a 21 watt and as far as I know 5 watt but there are also more say heavy um, lamps that you can use for such a purpose the only uh, idea is here that you change here the voltage thus you change the current we have we are talking about Ohm's law so the current changes the voltage changes and here we must calibrate that meter that is normally never made to be used as an amperometer it's used in many cases for much more sensitive purposes 
because it uh, is made for 500 microampere or so, or even 100 microampere, and perhaps even 50 microampere. Anyway, so let's uh, want to show now what to do. Here is the shunt wire. Here is my calibrated meter. It's now on the 10 ampere scale. It is in series with the microampere meter, uh, of which we have to find out the best shunt resistor. It's in such a low value, say 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 range, that, well, uh, many hobby meters cannot uh, measure that. But the whole thing is extremely simple. Take a piece of wire and use that here as a shunt. I'm now going to lift up the voltage of the power supply. You can see here that the meter, the pointer moves and moves further and further and on a certain moment the maximum current that the uh, power supply gives is, is there and we read that it is 0 0.95 ampere, so approximately 1 ampere and now the only thing is to make this, this pointer here move from the outside to the inside. So make that, that uh, microamperimeter as, uh, as unsensitive as possible. So I'm going to do that now. You, you can see and hear it. This wire now, I only have one hand, this wire now is shortcutting the uh, microamperimeter and now we read on the scale say 500 microampere while the I have to do that better 500 microampere I take a small pause because I want to show it in a good way I now connect the shunt wire properly parallel to the now it's connected properly parallel to the microamperimeter and we see here on the scale I've indicated 520 milliampere but in reality it is 9 uh, 980 milliampere that means that we have to make this wire shorter that can be done very easily in, in an experimental way. So perhaps when I cut off this wire here, the shortcut wire that shortcuts the, the microamperimeter to, for instance, this point, it could be that uh, the pointer here on the meter matches with my calibrated amperimeter. So that's more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. It's very, very simple. Uh, perhaps such an explanation looks a little bit cumbersome, but it is surely not. The whole issue is we have here a calibrated meter. That's this one. In series with a uncalibrated meter. And we use here a piece of wire as a shunt piece of copper wire say one meter 50 centimeters 20 centimeters 20 centimeters for instance in case of a 500 microampere meter that you want to use as a 10 ampere meter etc in that case 20 centimeters of copper wire can be enough to make such a meter work. Thanks for watching. And of course with a too high current
such a micro amperometer can easily burn out. So be a little bit careful when using a shunt. So uh, say it's better to make the shunt very low and not too high in very low in resistance and not too high in resistance. So make that wire uh, between one meter or two meters to start. Sorry, uh, make it uh, not so long. That's what I wanted to tell because, of course, when the wire that, should, that uh, shortcuts the microamperometer is short, the pointer will not move so very fear. So there is a kind of distribution between the shunt, that's here, say a piece of wire, a couple of wire, and the microamperometer. And that distribution of current is, uh, say, responsible for how far the pointer will move. But the only thing is that I wanted to tell in this video that is that it's very simple to make such a shunt. Say no calculations needed. In almost all cases.